Our final speaker of the night is an actor, a director, theater instructor on this stage every other night this week, probably during the, uh, the play that's going on right now. He's the artistic producer of the Shakespeare Company's program director for Shakespeare by the Bow. He's also acting in and the fight director, not flight director, which is what I read first, fight director <laughs> of ATP's The Virgin Trial, which is currently showing on this very stage. Please welcome our last speaker of the night, Hasem Kadri. Is there an after party? Because this gig is lit. Okay. The great philosopher, Jerry Seinfeld, once said, Here's my Jerry Seinfeld. Public speaking is the number one fear of North Americans. <laughs> number two is death. Death is number two. This means to the average person at a funeral, you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy. <laughs> it's frightening up here. Not hiding behind a character, being yourself and feeling exposed. I don't do this normally. I don't do lectures. I'm not a public speaker. I've been portrayed I've been trained to portray a character in the structure of storytelling. I am an actor. I've been acting professionally for over 20 years, and I can tell you that every day is a test of the performance, qualities, and suitability of my work. Every time I hit the stage, I am on trial. I've been on trial since the moment I entered this profession. I'm on trial right now, and I'll be on trial tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. <laughs> as I perform in Kate Henning's The Virgin Trial. The racy political thriller. Get your tickets, folks. If I can give you any incentive, I'm wearing underwear in half the show, so. I'm trying to sell tickets, die. Okay. Uh, I was classically trained at the Stratford Festival of Canada, and I spent six years of my life studying and performing Shakespeare. Now, being immersed in the realm of Elizabethan England and the heightened language of Shakespeare, it has given me an extreme appreciation for the discipline of language and specifically the power of rhetorical speech. Now, what is uh, rhetoric? The definition of rhetoric is the art of effective and persuasive speaking or writing, especially the exploitation of figures of speech and other compositional techniques. Yeah, easy for me to say. It's the art of bewitching the soul. And Mr. William Shakespeare is an absolute master of it. The discipline of language is dying. With the advancement of technology, our means of communication has shifted. Our language has become pleasantly vague, and we have lost significant amounts of words in our vocabulary and gained new ones that have snuck into the, the vernacular. Hey, cool, man, that's cool. Why do you think we have to hire lawyers when uh, we go to court? Because we're not able to defend ourselves. Now, Shakespeare wasn't really very fond of lawyers, but the mind of a trial lawyer and one of a classical actor parallel in scope in many different ways. Now, remember that fear of public speaking I talked about earlier? Well, lawyers also have to create a persona that their audience has to identify with. Being able to formulate an argument through the art of persuasion and dissuasion using literary devices to sell your case is one thing. But being able to execute that argument is where we really see that actors and trial lawyers aren't so far apart. Now, you could be highly educated and really know the full scope of a case, but if you can't present it clearly to the jury, then it doesn't really matter what you know. Just like you can know the depth of a character and understand the play fully, but if the dramatic action and the scenes aren't being fully realized and the intentions are not clear on stage, it becomes a superfluous venture. Lawyers and actors must be able to translate their case and appeal to an audience. Lawyers use many literary devices to strengthen their case, antithesis, metaphor, alliteration. They use the same devices that Shakespeare serves up on a platter and asks every single actor to exploit. Shakespeare constructs his plays as a series of arguments and uses these literary devices to strengthen the soul's wit and gives the actor the key to his literary kingdom. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Now that is a lifesaver. Two lines of the same length that rhyme and complete one thought. In Shakespeare, it's used as a device to bring energy to the end of a scene and vault momentum into the next scene. Now, Mr. O.J. Simpson, 
making another cameo appearance. <laughs> the turning point of that trial was when Johnny Cochran used Shakespeare's most popular device, the rhyming couplet. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. It's a lifesaver. <laughs> like an actor, the trial lawyer must and should learn how to peel away artifice, strip away his or her lawyer persona and become a storyteller. The theater offers a, an invaluable lesson for trial lawyers to study the art of storytelling. A lawyer in the courtroom and, uh, and an actor in the theater must both be audible. The athleticism required is really underrated. You have to sustain vocal energy for very long periods of time using your diaphragm, and it must be aesthetically pleasing to the listener. Jurors and audience alike have been able to, to clearly understand, and they should be able to clearly understand what has been said. Actors and attorneys must also carry a relaxed disposition. In its true essence, theater is grounded in the idea that art imitates life and expresses the human condition. The same is true for trials. The very essence of a trial is a story, the story of the human condition. The goal of the attorney is to paint a reconstructed reality of past events such that they see what happened even though they were not actually present to witness the original event. In the theater, stories are either told as monologues to the audience or in dialogue with other actors. In the trial, the exact same situation plays out. And in opening and closing, you speak directly to the jury. The middle of the trial is a collection of dialogues between you and other performers in the courtroom, the witnesses and the jurors. Now, what does an actor have to teach a trial lawyer? Well, on a simple level, just as there are no retakes on the stage in the theater, there are no retakes in the courtroom. Everything is happening in real time, requiring lawyers to be just as present in the courtroom as actors are on stage. The goal of the actor and the lawyer is to transform personal experience into a common and discernible form of expression that has the ability to change something in the listener. Actors must take the audience on a journey, bringing them with them, their minds and their hearts. I have neither the scholar's melancholy, which is emulation, nor the musicians, which is fantastical, nor the courtiers, which is proud, nor the soldiers, which is ambitious, nor the lawyers, which is politic. I'm not a lawyer. I've never played one on TV. But I have played one on stage. <laughs> but don't trust an actor. You don't know who they've been. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.